Um, the chair now recognizes the lady from South Carolina, Ms. Mays, for five minutes for her question. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is an interesting hearing today. I think the left has lost its proverbial mind. I've heard a lot from the left today about how we are, a quote, a nation of laws and need to follow our laws. It's the same group of people that won't uh, condemn violence by Antifa. It's the same group of people that won't condemn violence by Black Lives Matter. It's the same group of people that won't condemn violence, anti-Semitic violent protests against Jews in this country right now. Um, and they, wanna, they want to lecture us about following our laws, which is complete and total BS. <clears throat> Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas have willfully and intentionally unleashed an invasion of this country by illegal aliens from around the world, including known terrorists, sex offenders, and drug traffickers. By systematically dismantling the successful border security policies of the Trump administration, they flung the border wide open for any and all who wish to enter here illegally. That is on their backs. They claim their open border policies are compassionate, but the unprecedented humanitarian national security and economic crisis they have created is anything but. From a humanitarian standpoint, the horrors caused by the Biden administration's open borders are beyond words. Criminal cartels who control the border force illegal aliens, including women and children, into indentured servitude, sex slavery, drug trafficking, and worse, to pay their way into the United States. In fact, studies estimate 60% of unaccompanied alien children are exploited through child pornography and drug trafficking. If you speak to law enforcement at the border, you will hear of the rape trees rape trees, where they hang the underwear of women and girls they brutally raped on their journey to America like a trophy. There have been record deaths of illegal aliens, record deaths of American citizens due to fentanyl, and record profits for drug cartels at the hands of this administration. Ten years ago, I didn't even know what fentanyl was, and just in 2023 alone, I knew two people that died of a fentanyl overdose. Open borders aren't compassionate, they are evil, and I hope like hell, Governor Abbott and other governors at the southern, southern border let these sanctuary cities know what's going on at, at our southern border and share that evil with them, because this is at their hands too, and all of a sudden they have illegal immigrants in their cities and they don't want anything to do with them anymore. Alejandro Mayorkas has blood on his hands. My first question today, I've heard a lot this morning, Mr. Edlow, about the left, saying that legal immigration is just so darn difficult. We're a nation of laws, but yet we can't follow our laws. The hypocrisy is, is real. Um, just a, a cursory question. How many come into our country legally every year? Uh, the, the, the number, I, I couldn't give you an exact number, but it's, it's uh, close to a million, if not over. Uh, yeah, around one, one point million right. year after year, right? And can you explain how directives issued by Secretary Mayorkas have empowered drug cartels? Certainly. Uh, the, the directives, starting with the halting deportation the first day of the Biden administration and then moving on to the enforcement priorities under Secretary Mayorkas, have uh, made it so that drug cartels know that the majority of people that they help to come across for one reason or another or that they exploit to help them get across uh, are going to uh, are, are going to be not the subject of, of deportation, of enforcement actions, and ultimately, it's going to help the cartels gain a, a greater foothold in the country. Do you, I have one more question. Do you believe Secretary Mayorkas' actions and directives violate federal law and his oath of office? Well, I believe that the, the actions, especially in terms of the regulations, have made the border significantly less secure. They are in violation of the law. And uh, I, I do believe it's dereliction of duty for him to have signed off regulations that have done that. Thank you. I have one last question for Mr. Homan. In the infinite wisdom of state and local officials in South Carolina, there are actually zero sanctuary cities in our great state. However, on October 7th of 2021, Secretary Mayorkas issued a memo directing ICE to halt immigration enforcement in so-called protected areas throughout the country. As former di acting director of ICE, can you explain how this undermines the ability of ICE to effectively enforce the law? Is it even possible for ICE to do their job under current DHS directives? Because there's locations where they could be an aggravated felon, a public safety threat, we're not allowed to go there. If they're within a close vicinity of school, uh, if they're in a close vicinity of a doctor's office. And I, I understand humanitarian concerns, but where's the public safety concern on that? And if I can add one more thing, ma'am, uh, earlier, uh, 
I was questioned about the terrorist uh, apprehended on the southwest border, and I was just heard that the Trump administration had more. I have the CBP web page here I took off this morning. An FY17, two on the southern border. FY18, six. An FY23, FY19, zero for a total of 11. If you count the south northern border, total of 14. Southwest border, 11. Under the Biden administration, FY21, 15. FY22, 98. FY23, 169. So far this year, 30. So we got a grand total over, th over 282 compared to 11 or 14, depending on what board That's you're DC talking. math for you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Thank you. The chair recognizes Mr.